Hello and welcome to another Wobbly Camera Guy video. Today's video, we're going to be looking at this COSA 1302T 6 transistor radio from around 1962. As you can see, it's just quite a chunky radio, uh, probably looking about a 300 millimeters wide, um, just over 200 millimeters high, about 90 millimeters deep. So she's no small uh, um, radio by any means. And just to give you a comparison, um, that's a little shirt pocket radio um, from a similar sort of period. Gives you an idea of sort of scale. So I guess this is more aimed at perhaps sort of um, a kitchen radio rather than one that you'd take around every day. Although it has got a carry strap. So yeah, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. But nice quality of sound out of this radio. Um, it's a wooden enclosure with a decent sized speaker, so really, really nice. Um, colours are absolutely fantastic, I love these. Um, to be honest, I know it's 1962, but if you put this in a modern kitchen, a bit of a retro sort of look, um, it would be a real talking piece to be honest, because it would just sort of fit in. Uh, yeah, they've really got the design sort of spot on. Um, I really like this, it's just uh, a medium wave and a long wave. Uh, just got the volume control there. And the normal sort of tuning controls down the bottom. So, I think what we need to do um, is fit some batteries and see how she sounds. Okay, so to fit the batteries, simply undo the two screws on the rear of the cabinet, like so. Simply on clips to reveal the inside. Um, basically, we've got two PC boards. We've got the RF PC board and we also got the amplifier um, board just to um, let you know around this sort of time 62 63 um, obviously the Japanese radios were making their presence really felt in the industry and I think sort of a lot of the manufacturers were starting to struggle so much so what they actually did they actually sort of shared some of the actual um, components between different radios so for example this amplifier board is actually found in other radios and I happen to have an example of one of those um, this is a real, real ratty Stellar radio, Stellar being a subsidiary of Philips. Um, but if I take the back off, again two screws, that'll be a slightly different method of doing the actual cabinet. Not sure if you can see, but that board and then that board are one in the same. So. Clearly they shared some of the technology just to try and keep the cost down, just to try and keep the Japanese at bay, but to be honest, they lost at the end of the day, but something to bear in and out really. As you'll see, um, she takes two batteries, so it's an 18 volt sort of um, circuit, and what I'll do, I'll use the two battery um, NICAD packs that I make up. It's a lot easier and more cost effective to use as it is and keep using PP9 batteries. So all this is an eight way AA um, battery holder with a connector to match up with the old PP9 connection. So we'll pop these on. We've got the clip attached to these other two. Okay. So they're not an exact fit, but they serve the purpose. Just put that back down on the face. Put the back on. And then we'll see how she sounds. So, turn her over. And put it on medium weight, a little correctly. more volume, see what we got. A little bit directional with the aerial. But to be honest, I don't know this comes through on YouTube, but here this sounds really nice and mellow. It's a real, real good tone. Try a long wave. Was it worth going through this that we're seeing now? Well, would, it, what, would you have gone the way that Scotland sort of did their handbrake? 
just turn off so you can actually hear me. Um, I really like this. I like the contrasting colours, um, the red, the actual sort of um, metal grill for the speaker. I think they really got that right, and it's um, it does appeal to me. I have to say that. Um, medium wave and long wave now VHF on this particular sort of um, model. It is a bit grubby, so what I'm actually going to do now is just get a little bit of arm cleaner on and just see if I can clean up just a little bit and then we'll put some um, treatment onto the, the finish just to uh, make it that little bit better. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so here we are. Just going to put some simple farm cleaner um, just on the surface. Don't put too much on. Um, simple reason, I don't want to soak it and then find it, the final actually starts to lift. So I'm just going to use an old paintbrush and just agitate it. Get some of that grubby stuff off the volume as much as we can anyway I hope you can see this I actually can't see the camera that well so okay it's getting some of it off look see the uh, the mucky stuff there so I'll we'll just wipe that down just a little bit surprising how much is actually still on there when I mean, it looks relatively clean anyway so I'm just going to do a bit of a demonstration not going to do all of it but you get the idea let's just lift that up a bit if it on lift up sometimes a little bit tricky to get to all of the dirt especially the little bits that hide in the handles In there okay reasonably clean don't do anything on the back let's just try a little bit see if it will shift some of those marks this isn't too aggressive so hopefully shouldn't harm the finish too much You get the general idea. So there we go. I think what we could actually do is just put a little bit of silicon on there, just so again, just to brighten it up just a little bit. This isn't really meant to be a cleaning video, so. But there you go. I think she looks quite smart. Love the colours on this, as I say. Um, this would not look out of place in modern sort of environments, kitchens, you know, wherever sort of feature. Um, yeah, I really like it. So let's see how she finally sounds. Oh, a bit loud. See, she's got some. Uh, she's got some volume. Enthralling. First four to here at Sandy Park. Poor kick Maunder, but if Blasty ended up... Come on to the long wave. Definitely not the only person in this position. There you go. There's also, of course, the students who are actually... I'll turn that off. And to be honest, if you like your cricket, um, listen to some long wave on a summer's afternoon. Nothing better. It sounds absolutely sort of fantastic. So, there you have it. A cost at 1302T from around about 1962 and um, just to find a little bit in the background you might have seen this little radio this is another one of my Russian radios that I've actually just sort of found out when I was um, searching for the, uh, the, the the Casa one this is a Salga 4 r 2 now nothing about it I'm going to do some research first but if you've already seen some of my previous um, transistor radios I've done two or three on some Russian radio so I'll do a bit of information on it and uh, I'll do another video on that in the, at a later date if you'd like me to do that so there you go um, if you enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up and um, give me your comments whether they're good or bad I don't mind I'm growing I'm still learning to do this this is very much me just doing this off the cuff and um, hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch up with you soon